Hi, my name is Jenny Bhatt and I'm a translator from Gujarati to English. I'm going to be reading today from my translation, uh, The Shehnai Virtuoso and Other Stories. This is a collection of short stories by Dhumketu. He was known as the pioneer of the modern Gujarati short story. Some of these stories are more than 100 years old, um, but they are part of a uh, very important part of the Gujarati literary canon. The story that I'm going to read is the title story, The Shehnai Virtuoso. The Shehnai is a musical instrument that's still played today in India, um, often at weddings, but also at sad occasions. Hassan village, which looks so shabby during the day, alters its appearance in such a way at night that it doesn't seem like its daytime self at all. On a moonlit night, when both its water-filled lakes look like serene skies and begin to make the night lotuses sway lovingly, that vision is one of life's invaluable privileges. In the slow and gentle ripples of the breeze, the waters of both peaceful lakes do a twinkling dance, like some divine beauty smile. Unintelligible, lovely secret sounds emerge from within the playful interweave of shadow and light in the nearby coconut groves. Further back, the forest, sleeping in the countless mid-sized green hills, assumes a kind of all-pervasive, formless beauty that is not recognized visibly, but perceived within. And at the lake's edge, from far away in that coffee house, stray voices bring across an unusual sweetness because of the remoteness. At that time, to stop for a moment or two, by chance, is rare fortune, like some sacred sighting. I had received that good fortune once, but it is so embedded into my memories that even now, whenever I open my mind's eye, it feels as if Parson Splendor is inside of me, or I am myself within Hassan. During the day too, the forest canopies on that reddish soil of Mysore can make you forget all the cares of the world for a moment or two. But due to them, the village takes on a kind of ethereal look at night, which is truly wonderful against the skyline. Once I had spent a night in that village. Suddenly today, that memory rises from within me. The night was well underway and it was a moonlit one. I thought to continue sleeping would be a sin. Such a lovely night had blossomed. I sat up in bed and called out to Havayo. Havayo was none other than a talkative youth from the village. As soon as I had arrived in the guest house during the day, he had shown up talking about far off places. I devised the name Habeya based on his business. God only knows his real name. Here in this unknown land, there was a need for someone knowledgeable. So, while drinking tea, he had spoken of the sky, the wind, birds, etc. From the famous South Indian sculptures of Jakanacharya to Keshav Mandir. Due to this flighty talk, I had named him Havayu. He had said to me, it doesn't seem like anyone is going to be able to sleep tonight in the village. Why? What is it? You'll see for yourself the blooming vision at night of Hassan village. 
this little piece of earth. It's the beauty queen of South India. I laughed inwardly. This was a clear example of how man is a compulsive slave to his own emotions. In his mind, his village was unique. In my mind, there was no beauty like that of Sabarmati's vast sand-filled shores on a moonlit night. But the night progressed a bit further and Havaya's point began to seem 100% true. Arsene village stood like such a vision, as if some heavenly angel. Such charm could not be had even in that Gantavad village, settled on the banks of the Shingoda River of the Girnar jungle. Otherwise, under the canopy of the forest, the shimmer of a moonlit night is something else. So I thought to spend this night sleeping in bed would be a real pity. And so I had called to Havaya. He was lying awake. Why, Saab, had I not told you? So saying, he immediately sat up. Every year on this day, no one sleeps in Hassan village. And then, without saying anything more, we went for a walk. We strolled towards the village. Thank you.